Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. So one of the things that we Christians are probably not great at talking about until it's too late is the crisis of faith, doubt. It's usually not a thing that actually comes up in public conversation until somebody's already left the church. And I think it's because we spend so much time trying to measure faith and not the God who is working it. We, we try and measure faith by um, our certainty, um, our, our works that stem from it, our emotion because of it. And so we can never actually admit to questioning this stuff because, well, that would mean that I don't feel right or think right or do right. Um, that, that would mean that that absence of emotion or, or certainty is, is somehow um, proof that, that um, we don't belong here. Um, and so we pretend that we never doubt, but I mean, we do. I do. It's not good, but it's not uncommon. The question is, what do we do with that doubt? What do we do with that crisis of faith? Do you go to your heart, which wants some things that you know are bad for you? Just, you know, assume whatever you want must be real. So the God who gives a law that you don't like must be imaginary. Do we go to the world, which makes no secret that it's an enemy of your faith and still asks you to assent to just as much without ever questioning it? Or to God's word, which is, you know, the thing that you were wondering about in the first place, so it might actually be worth studying. I mean, actually reach out to your pastor, talk about the questions that you have, because I got a hunch you're not the first to have them. Maybe you could hear an answer. I mean, actually ask your pastor. He, pastor, he, he shouldn't look down on you for wondering about this stuff. I mean, and if it's true, it, it will hold up to you questioning it. So you, you can question it. God gave you his word so that you can take your doubt, your uncertainty, your fear, your sin, your unbelief, and, and well, crash it into his word that his word would overwhelm all of these things, that his Holy Spirit would, would work true and right faith um, and, and actually help you grow. Um, the, the problem with not talking about crises of faith, except when you've already left, is, well, <laughs> then what? Maybe you did leave for a while. And so I'm glad you're back, or at least wondering about it. So is God. So much that he actually kept your baptism waiting for you. Your baptism, still good. You know how I know? He gave it to you with the intent to save you, a sinner. With the intent to, to call you out of unbelief and into belief, out of death and into life, to give you comfort in the face of doubt, to give you peace in the face of the devil and the world and your own sinful flesh. So if you were baptized as a child and then you fell away, stop looking at yourself and, and stop looking at your God. Look at who he is. Look at where he works. This is something Luther picks up in the large catechism and he writes, Therefore I say, if you did not believe, then believe now and say thus. The baptism indeed was right. But alas, I did not receive it right, for I myself also and all who are baptized must speak thus before God. I come hither in my faith and in that of others. Yet I cannot rest in this, that I believe, and that many people pray for me. But in this I rest, that it is thy word and thy command. Just as I go to the sacrament, trusting not in my faith, but in the word of Christ, whether I am strong or weak, that I commit to God. But this I know, that he bids me go, eat and drink, etc., and gives me his body and blood that will not deceive me or prove false to me. So it's this, I mean, how much doubt is worked when we make sure that everything right has to be within us? Never question, never doubt, never feel empty or lost. I may not have been faithful enough. That's fine, but God was, and he is. I don't trust myself. That's fine, probably wise, but I do trust his word and command. He said, do it this way. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was done that way, which is good. It's good for you. It's good for me. It's good for us so that it would not depend on how firmly we feel uh, this must be true. It would not 
depend on, on whether or not we've ever doubted or questioned, but it would actually give answer to all of the places that our faith seemed to come up dry. Our faith might have, have run low or empty or gone, but God is at work to renew it. God is at work to answer those things. God is at work to grant peace through his water joined to his word so that your baptism might be something that you can cling to, that when you are weak, his baptism would still be certain. His baptism would be the thing that unites us to Christ Jesus, both in his death and his resurrection. His baptism would be the thing that conquers death itself. And so, yes, it can it can endure even when we flee from it in unbelief. It, it can endure so that we would return to it and, and rejoice in it and, and find shelter in the God who would deliver us from darkness into light, from death into life, from despair and, and, and in, into to peace. In, in all of this, God is at work for your good. When we come to, to baptism, look to his word and his command and not yourself, not your heart, because, well, your heart was the problem to begin with. But baptism, that was the answer to begin with, too. God has established baptism so that when everything else feels like it's not enough, you would have something sure and certain. God's word, God's command, and these endure forever.